Hello, I'm Luca Torix, and today we are going to be discussing Rome Total War. Recently, I did a video where I discussed which out of the three Roman factions is the best, and today we're going to be doing a similar thing, but for the Barbarian faction. So we've got Gaul, for example, who I've clicked on to start off with, starting off in what is now sort of modern-day France and Italy. We also have Germania up here. Britannia, even further north up here, the good old Dacians who don't even get a place on the map, uh, they are an unplayable faction although you can unlock them pretty easily, uh, I've made a video on that before, and the Scythians, same kind of goes for them, and also the Spanish, same goes for them. So those are the factions we're going to be talking about today, those six factions, yeah I think I can count right, those six factions. And we're going to be discussing it from two perspectives. One perspective is their position on the campaign map. That means sort of their economic position, but also the factions that surround them and their sort of tactical place on the map. And the second bit we're going to be discussing is the unit roster. How good are their soldiers, how diverse is their army, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to be ranking them, so yeah, see if you agree with me and, uh, you know, comment below if you uh, have a different opinion. And in fact, that is what I'm going to start off with. I'm going to start off with talking about the unit rosters. We're going to go through each army very quickly and sort of discuss their strengths and weaknesses relative to each other. Let's go. Okay, so at dead last place is Dacia in terms of their army. Now, yeah, I mean, really, this is a very, very barbarian army. It's not very sophisticated at all. And particularly in the early game, you might struggle a bit. Really, the bulk of your army in the early game is going to be, hopefully not peasants, there's never any need for peasants. It's probably going to be these guys, Warband. Now, you'll see them again when I talk about the other factions. Warband aren't particularly amazing at all, and when I made my Dacia faction guide a long time ago, I would have talked about that. But it's just a very, very basic army. Now, if you do tech up, the Chosen Swordsmen are pretty damn solid, and Gaul have them as well. So, I don't hate all of the... Dacian infantry, for example, Falksmen are pretty decent, and the Thracians have them as well. They're a non-barbarian faction, but you have to sort of tech up before you get to these more decent units with good morale. And then again, in terms of the rest of their army, the Archer Warband in the early game aren't too bad, but it's nothing particularly special. These guys are certainly better. So I think the common theme, which is going to be a theme across all factions, of course, is you need to tech up to get to the better units. But for Dacia, it's particularly prevalent because the early units just really aren't that special. And... This army, you can see, the roster is quite small. There isn't really a lot of units, and that means there's a lack of diversity. For example, there are basically no skirmishers. There's no javelin men, there's no slingers, there's nothing like that. So you aren't going to have that really sort of fast, agile infantry. Yeah, I would say it's a very, very basic army. It's not... you can still make a good job of it. It's just a very, very basic army. So, yeah, and also, a thing I don't like about Dacia, and this has no relevance at all to anything, but this horrible sort of sludgy brown colour they're wearing, it really isn't nice. No, just no. Now, I really wasn't sure what faction to put next at number five, but as much as it pains me to say, I'm probably going to put Scythia. Now, this very much depends, because Scythia is a very unique faction for the Barbarians, in the sense that it is pretty much all cavalry. We just looked at the Dacians a second ago, they're pretty much all infantry, like the Chosen Swordsman or whatever. Well, these guys are pretty much all arch units, the complete opposite of Dacia. And that's why it makes it kind of hard to compare, because, for example, if you're really into cavalry and you're really into archers, then this is going to be the number one faction in terms of their army. But for the average player, I'm going to put Dace, uh, sorry, Scythia at number five, purely because, again, similar to the Dacians, there's a lack of diversity. They are very, very specialist in one thing in particular, and it's these guys, the horse archers, the noble women, the noble archers. Very, very overpowered units. Absolutely, you can spam, even in the early game, you can spam horse archers and take control of the map. But I'm going to put them at number five just because there are some situations where this army is just not really going to do the job. For example, if you're taking a city, that can be quite difficult at Scythia. If you're taking a city and you're going down tight city streets, that can be tough because the cavalry is less effective. These guys aren't going to be able to skirmish as well. They're going to get caught in melee combat and they're going to suffer very quickly. Now, they do have a tiny, very tiny bit of infantry. They've got peasants, which we've already discussed are basically worthless. And they have axemen. Now, axemen are pretty damn solid indeed, but that's all they have. It's heavy infantry, slow heavy infantry with good morale. They can't do everything. Very, very good at certain things, but very, very weak at certain things as well. And defending and attacking cities is a big weakness of Scythia. You always want to fight any open field. But I do like their orange colour, much nicer than the Dacian colour. Right, I've thought about this for a while, and I'm going to put Spain at number four. 
which may be a little bit controversial. It's fairly low down the list, but for me, the Spanish army does have a few problems. But we're going to start off with actually the good things about the Spanish army. Uh, the Iberian infantry is good. I like the Scutiari. I don't know how you say that, but I, I like them. Uh, they're kind of like Astarte, basically. Uh, and the Bull Warriors are very, very damn strong. So these three units are pretty competent indeed. Particularly these two will do a, a particularly good job. The problem is, for me, again, a sort of lack of diversity. You see, there are no archer units uh, at all. No archer units, which... For me, I like my missile attack. I think missile attack is very, very good to have supporting fire and it can change the balance of a battle. Cavalry is okay, but really nothing particularly amazing. At least the long shield cavalry do have good morale, but nothing particularly amazing. Certainly not in comparison to Scythia, which we just discussed. And also, um, the unit of town militia, which is their standard unit of infantry, is really quite weak. Poor morale, particularly on very high difficulty. They're going to struggle. Uh, you want to take up from town militia as quickly as you can. And we looked at some of the other units of the of the Barbarians. The standard unit is Warband. Well, at least they have normal morale. It's not poor, it's not good. But these guys actively have poor morale. So really, you want to take up Tiberian infantry as quick as you can. The reason I put them ahead of Scythia, just a little bit more diverse because they have that better infantry for sure. And the Bull Warriors are very, very good. So I think in terms of attacking a city or defending, I would rather be a Spanish army. But I can't put them above the other three Barbarian, barbarian factions Purely because of that lack of diversity, for me, that's a big issue. I also don't like the Spanish colour, I'm sorry. Now, Gaul is another example of an army that has some very, very good strengths, but also some very glaring weaknesses. So, you know what, I'll be nice and positive and start off with the strengths, which is certain units are very, very strong. For example, uh, the Chosen Swordsman. But you have to tech up, but the Chosen Swordsman certainly aren't too bad. You know, well-armoured, good stamina, excellent morale, very, very good unit. The problem is, of course, if we go to the negatives, the early units really aren't that great. Warband, very, very standard, not particularly amazing. Peasants are pretty terrible. So the infantry is terrible at the beginning, but once you tech up, pretty damn competent, which is why I quite like Gaul. Another thing I like about the Gaul army are the Druids. Now, this is one of the main reasons, actually, I put the Gaul army above all the others, is because morale-wise, it's very, very strong. Although the Druids aren't going to be amazing in combat, their stats are actually pretty good, but a very small unit, that's not where they're going to be used for. Their chanting can boost the morale of the units, and it can make a very average unit like Warband actually pretty decent because they have that sort of morale bonus. So the Druids are excellent indeed, you really do want to use them, and I think that's a big advantage above the factions I've already discussed, is, is morale for the Gauls, because yeah, I really, any faction that has a unit like this, I quite like indeed. Another thing about Gaul I like are the Forest of Warband. This is one of the best units of archers in the whole game. You know, I think really, other than that, you can put Cretan archers, or you could put maybe Pharaoh's Bowmen for Egypt, but they're up there in that sort of top tier archers. And again, we discussed with some of the factions earlier that they're very infantry based or very cavalry based, but the, the one sort of thing in common they don't have is just a lot of good archers. Well, the Gauls only have one unit of archers, but it's a damn good unit indeed. You don't need tons of slingers or skirmishers or cavalry or whatever if you've got a good unit of for, uh, Forest of Warband. Uh, talking of cavalry, not amazing, but will do a solid job. The Barbarian Noble Cavalry have good morale. But it's okay, cavalry certainly isn't the strength of the Gauls, but for me I just put them a little bit above Spain purely because of the morale boost and the fact they are more diverse because they can hit from range. So I quite like Gaul indeed, um, but they do have a few weaknesses, particularly in the early game. The disparity between the early game tech and the late game tech is really quite big. You want to tech up quickly as Gaul because you're going to struggle in the early game. But once you get rolling with your army, you can be pretty much unstoppable. So yeah, that's what I would say about Gaul. So that leaves two factions left. And at number two, it is going to be Britannia. Now, Britannia is a very, very interesting faction. Very, very interesting indeed. And there are things I like about it and there are things I don't like. A thing I don't like, and we just discussed archers, is that Britain have no archers at all. None. Zero. Zilch. But, saying that, Britain does have one of the most cool, badass, and funny units of missile infantry that you're going to see in the whole game, and that is head hurlers. They are notorious. Um, not particularly amazing in the melee attack or defense, but a missile attack of 17. I have no idea how a human head can do that much damage, but... 17 missile attack, apparently it is significantly more potent than an arrow that has been sharpened at the tip. I don't know how that works, but maybe they infested with rabies or something. I don't know how dead bodies work. 
yeah, this unit has a war cry that improves its attack, which is really, really cool. A little bit unruly, this army. The, there are certain units that may charge without orders, but the head hurler is just badass. I had to point that out straight away. Um, rather similar to Gaul, in fact, in terms of their infantry. Very, very similar. Uh, you have the basic peasants and warband at the beginning, but if you bother to tech up, you can get up to swordsmen, chosen swordsmen, and the world warriors are pretty cool, but the lack of defense does make them a little bit of an issue. They have the Druids, and the Druids, like I already discussed, are excellent. So actually very, very similar to the Gaul army, I would say. But the thing is with Britannia, the chariots are really, really quite good. Now, I'm not a huge fan of chariots, I'll admit, but they are a lot more potent than the Gaul cavalry, in my opinion. Chariots can cause morale damage, they can slice through units like crazy. The toughness of this army is what puts them a little bit ahead of Gaul. But I think the Gaul army is very underrated. And I'm certainly not going to hate on the Gaul army in this video. I think it is close between Britannia and Gaul, personally. Because this, this whole section is very, very similar. This sort of early section. It's this late bit for me that puts Britain ahead. But not by a whole lot. And even though I said that Britain and Gaul were pretty close and Spain wasn't even far behind. There is easily one faction that for me is head and shoulders above the rest. And I think for most people um, is head and shoulders above the rest. And that is Germania. Yes, Germania is an excellent faction and I could I discussed in my Germania faction guide why but I think that definitely Germania has the strongest army of all the barbarian factions the infantry is they have for actually quite a lot of options in terms of infantry but the the, the basic spear warband that the Germanics have is phalanx so instantly you've got better warband this is just the starting basic warband they are instantly better than the barbarian warband of the other factions because they can be in phalanx they can be in a nice tight formation and when you're fighting against other barbarian factions which you're likely going to be doing in the early game you have the immediate advantage in terms of infantry over every faction you can slice through their warband because this is a much more compact organized unit but that is far from all the infantry they have. They have certainly good units of Axemen. You have Axemen and Knight Raiders over here. Very hardy units, good morale, and they're going to do a damn good job. You know, you imagine an army charging forward, you know, armed with axes. Pretty damn scary. Uh, and then, just to make it even more scary, you have the Berserkers. This unit is a very notorious unit. Um, excellent attack, defense, two hit points, which means they essentially have to be hit twice. A very unruly unit with excellent morale that's basically just going to charge forward. But... They have this thing called Berserk Mode, you probably know about it, where the flag above their head glows red and they basically just go sicko mode on everyone and start chopping everyone's heads off, going insane, their stats boost massively and they're almost unstoppable to kill. They will just chunk through a whole army, one unit will just chunk through a whole army if they go Berserk. And then, just to make them even better, you have the Screeching Women, which are basically equivalent to Druids. They're going to boost the morale of the army, so already you've got strong, hardy units that are willing to fight. But then you top them with the Screeching Women, and they're just going to become even, even better. So, yeah, excellent, excellent army in terms of the infantry. And then just to top it off even, even more, you've got the Cavalry. Maybe the early Cavalry isn't that amazing, but you get onto the higher stuff, the higher stuff, and the Gothic Cavalry is really amazing. Excellent morale, 19 defense for Cavalry. I'm so hyped about this army, yet yeah, the Germania army, really you can just demolish everyone with this army, particularly as you're fighting weak factions in the beginning, you have such an advantage, there's no excuse really for losing uh, as Germania. So that is the end of the first section of the video, we are now going to go on to the second section of the video, where we're going to be talking about the tactical position on the campaign map for all of the barbarian factions. Okay, so we're going to start off with the weakest starting position, and I'm sorry fans of Dacia, but I think it's going to be you again at number 6. Now, it's not a terrible, terrible starting position, and I think that any faction can do well regardless of their starting position. I don't think it's hugely important, but the problem, there's so many problems with Dacia, um, but for me, it's the economy that really, really suffers with Dacia. Now, just to basically summarize economy in terms of where you want to be positioned, really, first of all, you want to be positioned somewhere along the Mediterranean because sea trade is such a huge part of this game. And when you start getting ports and stuff, you can make a lot of money from sea trade, and that's good. Dacia is stuck in the middle of Europe, and really, this is one of the worst positions. There are no resources here at all. You can see it's just barren farmland, uh, which you know, really isn't that amazing. Dacia starts off with two settlements, Campus Yazijes and Porolisum. 
two very, very small settlements. And if you look at the financials, you're projected to lose money uh, from the very, very get-go. And that is because poor starting position and only two, two settlements, which are very underdeveloped. Poralism really doesn't have that much. It has a little bit, but nothing amazing. Yazajez has basically nothing, a muster field and Warriors hold nothing to make money. Now, the good thing with Dacia is that there is lots of potential for easy expansion early on. A Quinkum you can take easily, Lovacy you should be able to take really easily as well, and then if you get down quick enough, maybe Sagestica or Uvavum. And you can get up to four or five settlements pretty quick, which is good. I do like that. But the problem is with these settlements, Lovacy, a Quinkum, and Uvavum, okay, you might gain three settlements pretty quickly, but they're they're equally poor rubbish rebel settlements. These have nothing interesting in them. A Quinkum doesn't even have any buildings in it. So, okay, you might be able to get territory, but it's not valuable territory. And sometimes it's quality over quantity. And, you know, Dacia, you can get a lot of quantity early on, but just not good. So the, the economy is the main reason. But also with Dacia, they're in a little bit of a vulnerable position because there are a lot of factions around them. The uh, Germanics can potentially attack from this side. You've got the Scythians that could potentially attack from here, the Thracians, and the Macedonians. You could potentially be at war with four factions very, very easily, and not only be at war from four factions, but have four factions surrounding you from all sides. You don't want to be right in the middle of the map like this. It's a horrible starting position. It's not good at all. It's a good challenge, but yeah, the economy plus the tactical position, really not great. Next up might be a little controversial because I am putting them lower than Scythia, but it is going to be Spain. Now, there are several reasons why I don't like the Spanish starting position. I've never liked the Spanish starting position. And one of the reasons is because it is such a fragmented empire. It's not the most fragmented empire in the game. Greece probably takes the the crown for that one and the Seleucids are not far behind. But out of the barbarian factions, it is the least centralised faction uh, that we're going to be discussing today. You can see that the Spanish own basically the edges of Spain, but there is a big slice in the middle. Half of it is Gaul and half of it is Carthage. And that's annoying for me. You know, not only are the settlements carved in half by the opposition, but also they're so far apart. They're so far apart. At least with Dacia, the two settlements are very quick. Uh, you know, close to each other. If you want to get from Poralisan to Campus the Azijes, or change resources, or change units, very easy to do that. With Spain, you know, getting from Scalabis even to Asturica, which is on the same side as Spain, takes so damn long. And Asturica is particularly annoying um, to get to because the amount of mountains, it takes ages to get up there because it, the terrain is horrible. You know, if you get a unit like this, look how far the, oh, is the Scutiari, right? Yeah, the Scutiari, Look how far they can travel. That in one turn, nothing. It takes a solid four turns just to get from Asturica to halfway to Scalabis. I mean, it 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 takes a solid five turns to get from those two settlements, and then you know it to get to Oscar is even further. That's insanity. That's like seven or eight turns. Horrible, horrible uh, positioning there. You know, I don't like the fact that it's in the mountains. Asturica is a particularly annoying settlement, and when I play Rome Total War, I particularly always try and avoid conquering, in quotation marks, Spain or Iberia because it's just so annoying to get from settlement to settlement. The area is not particularly profitable. Yes, it is on the coast. Yes, some of the settlements are in the Mediterranean, like Carthago, Noah and Oscar, but not particularly profitable area. I don't find a huge amount of money flows into me when I'm playing in Spain. In terms of the neighbouring factions, they're not particularly strong. It should be pretty easy to take out Numantia and Cordoba, but you know, it's not quite as bad as Dacia, but it really isn't great. I don't like the Spanish starting position at all. Next up, we have Scythia. I don't hate the Scythian starting position. I think the advantage of the starting position is that it's not a particularly vulnerable region. The Thracians might attack you at Campus City, but I generally the Thracians kind of have beef with the Dacians or further down with the Macedonians. They're unlikely to trudge up here to Chers and Lysos, which will be taken pretty quickly, or Tanais or anything like that. You also can take a few rebel settlements nice and easily, like I said with Dacia, Bicus Venidae, Domus Dolcius Domus, home sweet home, and also you have good access to Themyscira as well, which is one of the more profitable settlements in the game. So that is cool. You've got a nice defensible region. Really, the Armenians are unlikely to attack. So are the Parthians. So you're pretty safe, to tucked up in the corner, which is quite nice. This area of the map, it's just fields. It's the same as Dacia. It's, it's just fields. It's steppe. It's not profitable. There aren't good resources. Yeah, you have a little bit of access to the D 
Dead Sea? Um, or Caspian Sea? Caspian Sea, I think. I'm not sure my geography is failing me. I think I think this is the Caspian Sea, because I'm pretty sure this is like modern-day Azerbaijan, Armenia, and then Georgia up here. So I think this is the Caspian Sea. Uh, this must be the Black Sea, maybe? I don't know. I need to check my geography. I think my guess is this is the Black Sea, other one is Caspian Sea. We've gone dangerously off track. Uh, my point is, yes, you have got a bit of sea trade going on, but not a lot. Bear in mind, you don't even have ports at the beginning. You have to earn up to them. Really, you're not going to be making a lot of money from sea trade until you eventually make it down to the Mediterranean. And it's a long trek. It's a longer trek than with Dacia or with Spain to the Mediterranean. It's going to take a while. So in terms of economy, Scythia is very, very weak. It's just such a vast distance. It can be very annoying. If you want to get an army down from Campus Alani to somewhere quickly, you just can't. You just can't. It's such in the corner of the map. So it's close between Scythia and Spain. I think they have similarities in terms of being far away from each other, the settlements, not being particularly profitable. For, but for me, I just find Spain very annoying to play as. I would rather play as Scythia. So I'm going to put Scythia uh, at number four. Okay, at number three, we have Gaul. Now, Gaul is quite an interesting starting position. They have territory all the way up here in what is now modern-day France, stretching down, like we discussed earlier, all into, uh, you know, Iberia and whatever. So there's quite an interesting starting position. You also have rebel territory that you can quite easily take, Lugdunum and Massilia. And Massilia is quite a valuable one because it's on the Mediterranean coast. So you can actually build quite a large centralised empire fairly early on. You also have territory over here, which is quite profitable. Uh, Mediolanium has the potential to be decent, and Batavian very much so has the potential to be decent. If you watch my um, Which is the Best Roman Faction video, I discussed in detail about how much I love Batavium because it's an extremely high growth settlement. You can tech up quickly because of it and make a lot of money. Excellent settlement Batavium is. One of the more important ones in the game, in my opinion. So things are looking pretty good, right? Well, yes, but the problem is you can very easily get yourself into trouble if you're not careful. You can very easily be attacked from all sides, kind of like Dacia, and that is the main the main weakness of the Gauls, in my opinion. You know, if the Spanish, who are quite likely to attack you, considering they're going to want to unify the Iberian Peninsula, the Spanish are quite likely to go to war with you, so you can have war on this front. Up here, you could have war with Britannia very, very easily. The, Br the British are very, very aggressive, and they're likely going to go for Conde Rendonum. I think that's Ren. I don't know. Maybe. Um, very, very quickly. So you're going to have war up here. The same goes for Germania. They're fairly likely to go and attack for Alessia. They're kind of more defensive, the AI. You're more likely to be attacked by Britain. But there is still a possibility that if you're unlucky, the Germanics will attack you. So you could have war over in Spain, over up here. And then, just to top it all off, the Julii, which are one of the strongest starting factions the Romans are not to be messed around with, are likely going to attack you as well. Down the south we have uh, this fella. Never heard of him before. And what that means is you can have war on three fronts pretty easily. And three fronts over quite a large area. So you're not even going to be able to move armies over and you can get crushed pretty damn easily. In fact, that's how the AI suffers. The AI does not do very well as Gaul because first of all, the Julii is pretty much pre-programmed to win against Gaul. But also... They're going to be suffering from multiple fronts and it's just going to crumble. So as the player, you've got to avoid the same mistakes the AI makes and really make sure that you focus on one front. Now the advantage of being near the Romans is that you can take them down pretty quickly. And I always say if you're near the Romans, don't wait for them to attack you because they are going to attack you. Hit them first. I think this is a solid starting position. It's better economically than the other factions we've discussed. And... As I say, good potential to strike crime quickly, but also you've got to be careful because you can have war on multiple fronts. It's not the most it's not the most defensive starting position. In second place, we have Germania. Yes, Germania has another very high spot uh, in this rankings, and there are several reasons. First of all, a nice, pretty defensive position. Now, the AI does suffer a lot as Germania for various reasons, but as the player. This should be a pretty safe region. The Dacians and the Scythians are no threat. Yes, the British may be a threat, so that's the only possible thing you might have to take into account. But for me, the Gauls aren't really going to attack you because they're going to be on the defensive like I just discussed. And the Romans will take a while to get for you. There's a buffer of mountains and also the Gauls. Another good thing about the German Empire is that it's pretty solidified. It's pretty compact. You know, they're, they're all the settlements are all pretty close to each other if you want to get from Dam to... Dammer to Bartavodrum to Trier doesn't take that long. 
So that's quite good. And also, there are nice rebel territories to take early on. You can get a pretty good, big, solidified empire early on. Borders home, very easy to take. Vickers Gothai, same. Lovacy, you have them. You can get seven, eight, nine settlements very, very quickly and have a solid, solid empire, which is good. Now, economically, fairly weak, to be honest, because the only sea trade you're going to be getting is up here, and you haven't even got a port up here. And none of the other factions have ports, so really there isn't much potential for sea trade in the Baltic Sea. What's interesting is though, the Germanics get 5,000 starting denarii. We discussed the Dacians earlier, they only have 3,000. At least you are projected to make a profit even before you do anything, unlike the Dacians who are projected to make a loss. So the economy is bad, but it's certainly not bad, as bad as it could be, um, which is, you know, okay. But I think I like about the Germanics is that you are actually well equipped to take down the Romans early on. You can quickly build a nice, decent sized empire by taking the rebel settlements, and then you can strike down against the Julii while they're distracted with the Gauls. Yes, I would say that the Germanic starting position certainly isn't bad. You've got good potential for early growth, just the economy is a little bit weak, you know, in my opinion. And finally, at number one, this isn't going to be much of a surprise. It is indeed Britannia because of their excellent, unrivaled starting position, uh, defensively anyway, on what is now modern day Britain. Nobody is ever, ever going to attack you. I swear I've never been attacked. I've never seen anyone go for Deva, Burukum or Londinium, unless really late game the Julii, I guess. But in the early game, you're pretty safe. If this was medieval two total war, different story because the damn Portuguese will get a boat and come and attack you in Wales but this isn't medieval 2 this is Rome total war and yeah you're, you're pretty safe up here you have three settlements that you can just leave let them do their thing tech up make money do whatever but you're safe you're safe on an island which is really really cool but you do have a foothold on the continent you can take advantage of the Germanics who are likely going to be over here distracted with rebels you can even better take advantage of the Gauls, who are going to be really suffering from the Julii. So you've got a good position to start off with there. And that means you can build an empire nice and quickly. You can sort of feed from the top, feed on the sort of weaknesses of these factions up here and storm down. And by the time you get to the Romans, you're going to be very, very strong indeed. I think that maybe the economy isn't the greatest, to be honest, if you're starting off as Britannia, although I do like the fact that you get a starting boat, unlike the Germanics who don't yet, they don't have a starting boat, which is uh, unfortunate, but yeah, the economy isn't amazing, I will admit, but the fact is, you're so well defended, you have basically three settlements that are guaranteed to be safe, no other faction in the game can say that. So anyway, that has been the video, I am going to summarise the factions by giving an overall ranking of what I think are the strongest and the weakest factions. In my opinion, the weakest barbarian faction is Dacia, because they, they come bottom in both those categories for reasons I've already explained. Dacia really doesn't have any particular strengths, it's a very very weak faction. Tough to put what I would put a 5, because for me personally, I really like Scythia, and I would be more confident playing as Scythia than I would at Spain. So I'm rather controversially, yes I had to think about that for a second, I'm very controversially going to put Spain at number 5. You can fight me all you want, but for me, I've explained why there are things I don't like about the Spanish. Uh, you know, the, they're no archers. Yes, they have got bull warriors and whatever, but the cavalry isn't amazing, and I hate their starting position. So I'm going to put Spain at number five. I'm going to put Scythia at number four, Gaul at number three, because I think Gaul is an underrated army. Weak in the early game, but can be very, very strong in the late game. Two, I'll put Britannia, and one, Germania, just because their army is so strong. Decent starting position indeed, and... You can just dominate the barbarian factions early on, build a huge empire, and then by the time you get to Rome, you should have teched up so much that you'll have Gothic cavalry or berserkers or whatever. You can you should be able to storm even Romans because they don't tech up as quickly as you. The AI is pretty lazy. So that's the order I would go with. Uh, let me know if you disagree in the comments. I'm sure there will be controversy over me putting Spain quite low and Scythia and Gaul quite high. So... Let me know what you think, but through my experience, I would be more confident playing a Scythia than Spain. That's just me, maybe. Um, it very much depends on how much you like cavalry, though, I would say. And I like cavalry a lot. Anyway, this has been all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. More content coming very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around.